Hi everybody, welcome back to London. You're watching theCUBE and we have a special coverage here of the pre-day at AWS headquarters in London. I'm Dave Vellante and theCUBE, we go out to the events, we attract, extract the signal from the noise. Alistair Allen is here, he's the Chief Technical Officer of Healthcare Kanos Software. Um, it's a Belfast-based company, public, publicly traded company. Alistair, welcome to theCUBE. Great Thanks to see you, thanks yeah, for coming on. You, you were downstairs earlier addressing the audience, we're going to talk about that, but first of all, tell us about Kanos. So Kanos, Belfast-based company, uh, formed in the late 80s, a spin-out of Queen's University in Belfast. Uh, we've grown to now over 1,300 people, uh, and we build a digital technology to help people work faster, smarter, and better. Uh, there's two things we do. We provide digital services, bespoke services for public and private sector organizations across the world. Uh, and we provide digital platforms for workday customers uh, and also for healthcare organizations. So when you say digital platforms, what exactly do you mean by that? Tell our audience. So our digital platforms in healthcare is something uh, that we can talk about. Uh, so uh, platforms to enable both hospitals to uh, digitize their, their workflows uh, and also regions, so CCGs, STPs within the NHS, to bring information together using a platform, uh, normalizing that data and, and making it available to clinicians and patients. And this is, uh, your, your flagship product is called Evolve, correct? And you're correct. one of the yeah. sort of founders or inventors of, of Evolve. Tell, tell us more about Evolve. So Evolve uh, originated uh, just over 10 years ago. Our first customer was Ipswich Hospital. Uh, and Ipswich had a, a big problem with paper. Uh, they had a uh, large uh, medical records library, uh, and they wanted, uh, they asked us to come in and, and help them digitize that, and uh, make it available in a, an easy to view, accessible format for their clinicians. So, so tell me more about that. So you, you digitize it, you take all those mounds of paper, and then what does that do other than reduce the mounds of paper? Does it make it searchable, or is it? Yeah, so we index, yeah, we, we index the, the content, we apply metadata whenever we capture it, trying to, to, to make it accessible for, for clinicians. Uh, I think when you digitize paper, the one good thing paper had going for it was you, know, you could pick it up and it was tactile. Uh, so we've, we've done a lot of work to try and you know, make it mobile, make it accessible, make it searchable. Uh, and increasingly now with uh, some of the services that, that AWS provide, we're able to look at taking that even further and, and, and getting more information uh, out of that content. Add some color to that. So how has the AWS cloud affected your ability to deliver these, these capabilities to your customers? Well, I think the, the breadth and depth of services that, that AWS provide enables us to, to be able to innovate quickly, uh, to use uh, services like I've mentioned, like Comprehend Medical, uh, that uh, take the, the heavy lifting uh, away from us and helps us focus on delivering better applications for our customers. So part of what you do is you've architected you know, the, the software and it's running on the cloud. Can you talk a little bit about the architecture, what you guys ha have built? I, I presumably the cloud allows you to scale yeah. you know, and take advantage of more innovations, yeah. but, but discuss the architecture if you would. So the, 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 the product that I uh, originally talked about in 2009 and, and about four years ago in 2015, uh, we decided to uh, re-platform for the cloud, uh, and that was in response to a number of problems that we were seeing in, in the market. Uh, a move to patient-centric care, uh, a drive to try and standardize care away from the variable nature that was there, and also to, to get away from closed siloed, uh, silos of information. And we decided at that point to, to create our platform uh, natively in the cloud. Uh, and and using the services of, of Amazon Web Services. So we, we created a microservices based architecture uh, that runs in a multi-tenant cloud native uh, way within within AWS. Uh, that allows us to adopt disciplines like continuous delivery and cultures like uh, DevOps, being able to release value quickly and often to so our customers. So it was a total rewrite of the platform? Yes, so we started again from scratch uh, and we developed that uh, using the, the modern cloud services. Uh, and we've used that then for, for other use cases as well. So we've moved beyond just uh, settings within a hospital and been able to take that beyond the walls of a hospital out into the community, 
into primary care, mental health, uh, and delivering uh, solutions like that across regions uh, within the NHS to join up information uh, where before clinicians would simply not have had access to those. And essentially you're migrating your existing install base to the cloud-based platform. I presume it's a SaaS-based platform, is that right? So uh, Evolve Integrated Care is the platform. It's a SaaS-based uh, platform. So we, we uh, run it, we monitor it, we maintain it, uh, and we deliver that as a service to our customers. And so your existing customers now have an opportunity to, to, to migrate, and how does, how does that all work? Yeah, so we're, we're talking to our, our existing customers about how they can leverage uh, the cloud-based platform uh, and the, the breadth of different services that it provides. Uh, we uh, very much see an opportunity for, for helping to, to digitize a hospital. So how do you optimize the flow of patients through a hospital, uh, making sure that uh, clinicians have access to the information uh, many of our customers have hundreds of, of applications, information spread across their estate, bringing that together uh, and, and orchestrating the workflow for particular pathways uh, or particular conditions. Well, uh, plus they have to manage their own infrastructure, I presume. Uh, right? and so absolutely, and, and they want, they like uh, we want to build applications quickly, they want to focus on delivering healthcare. They don't want to focus on managing TIN and, and, and server rooms within their hospitals. So. Our move to the cloud really came about because of our customers telling us that they're struggling to manage this infrastructure. Uh, they wanted us to take some of that burden away from them and to help them uh, with some of their security challenges, availability challenges. Quite often, their local infrastructure uh, was not very resilient. And by moving to AWS, we were able to, to use native cloud services to, to address many of those challenges. So you've taken away that heavy lifting for them, AWS <coughs> takes it away yeah, for you for in us, a large yeah, regard yeah. as well. Well, your engineers obviously can program the infrastructure, but but how have you seen the customers that have moved and taken advantage of this? What has it done for their business specifically? What's the impact? So, well, well I think it uh, frees up people within their organization to, to scale up in other areas, to, to do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, it frees up physical space as well in many cases. Uh, it takes away risk and, and, and we've all heard of some of the, the recent security incidents. WannaCry was a huge thing in the NHS not so long ago, coming around from just simple things like not patching uh, servers and workstations. So by taking on that responsibility, we're freeing up uh, those hospital systems to, to focus on uh, what they do best. How do they do that? Do they kind of retrain folks? Um, what's that been like? Is that was it, was it, I presume it wasn't frictionless, uh, but it's an opportunity for people to advance their careers. Have you, do you have any visibility on how your customers have handled that? To be honest, not a huge amount, not mm -hmm. a huge amount. Uh, it has, I would agree, there has been some friction there. It's not always an easy journey because there's a whole mindset change of, of what people used to do before and the types of activity that they'll, that they'll do tomorrow. Uh, and it's something that our customers are still on a journey on. Uh, so we're quite early on in, in that in that process. But I always say to to folks in in the IT community, if your expertise is managing storage arrays, there's probably you know a better future for you if you can move up the stack and learn more about applications, data, yeah. machine intelligence, and absolutely the like. higher up the value chain uh, and and getting closer to the user, closer to the customer. I mean that's where the difference is, and it's particularly in healthcare, right? You're trying to balance the the cost of healthcare, everybody's you know, aware of the rising cost of healthcare with the patient outcomes, um, and technology is a way to address that problem, isn't it? Absolutely, and I, and I think never before, I think it's just a great time to, to work in health IT. You know, we've, we've now got access to some fantastic services. Uh, the rise of artificial intelligence and machine learning has never before been so available. Uh, and really helping organizations such as ourselves to, to really solve those problems that, that our customers have and, and introduce those efficiencies and ultimately better patient outcomes. So how are you using the data that lives in Evolve? Um, I, I presume you're looking at applying ar artificial intelligence and, and the like. Talk about that, but also how do you ensure security, privacy, et cetera? Yeah. So a couple of things on, on data. I think uh, one of the, the things we've done recently is, is the adoption of the FHIR standard within healthcare. Uh, and all the data that we aggregate from the various uh, clinical systems, we normalize that down into a single uh, FHIR uh, data profile. Uh, and that really helps us then 
have a, a, a common data model that our application can use. But that's only the start. That creates the, the potential then to use that for secondary usage, such as population health, data analytics, uh, and ultimately machine learning. Uh, and we're looking at a number of areas in machine learning. I think uh, there are some ethical challenges there to be aware of. And, and we've started uh, with a recent uh, a examples of understanding how we could use machine learning to, to try and get that structured data out of the documents. That's something that we're working on with the AWS team at the minute uh, to leverage a lot of that scanned content that we have in Evolve and be able to create the structured uh, outcome. Uh, really to make it easier for, for clinicians to find information within the, the medical record. So with AWS reInvent last fall, uh, you know, uh, SageMaker was of course buzzing. Is that something that you're looking at? Um, it's something, uh, so we haven't used it in, in Evolve so far, but within Kianos we have an, an AI practice. Uh, and uh, we have a, a group of guys that are focused on, on, on in, uh, uh, the AI capability evaluating those tools, working with, with AWS, and, and helping us understand how we can use that technology to, to, to solve the problems of our customers. Yeah, it's early, early days. It, it, so you talk about helping solve the problems of the customers. Summarize for us the, the, the key problems that you see machine intelligence, AI solving. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's probably different categories of, of how you could use it. There's mm -hmm. the diagnostic sort of use case where you could use uh, AI to, to help uh, process imagery, to, to help uh, with the diagnostic process. There's uh, been able to add personalization to whether that be to patients or to clinicians, uh, helping to provide insight into uh, whatever the use case may be. Uh, and, uh, and other use cases similar to mm. that. Um, last word, so you were addressing the pre-day uh, healthcare, a little forum that's going on yeah. here at AWS. Uh, what's that like? What's going on downstairs? What did you tell the audience? Yeah, great day. So we had a group of healthcare uh, professionals uh, across the NHS in Ireland. A uh, very interesting group. Uh, we spoke this morning, I spoke with our customer, Gloucestershire uh, CCG, and we talked about the shared care record solution uh, that we've delivered into Gloucester. So that's uh, bringing information together for over 600,000 patients across the region uh, and providing information in a single joined up view that uh, was not available before. Uh, so great feedback, great interaction, lots of questions afterwards. Uh, so looking forward to going back down and, and chatting some more to the, to the group. Excellent. Hard to do that without the cloud, I would imagine. You know, <laughs> yeah, you can accommodate yeah, all uh, yeah, 600,000 yeah. customers, right? Not possible. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Alistair, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate having you. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Keep it right there. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE from AWS headquarters in London. We'll be right back. <laughs>